Hey everyone, welcome back to another top 10 facts video. If you enjoy these kind of videos, I've got a playlist all about top 10 facts of different characters, machines, and ships in Star Wars, so please check that out. Today we're going to be looking at a very interesting and unassuming character, Coleman Trevor. Now this man is the only one who actually stood up to Dooku and could have ended the entire Separatist war had he actually succeeded in the Genosian arena when he tried to blindside Dooku but was shot down by Jango Fett. Now if Jango wasn't there, I believe he would have been successful, possibly but we'll never know. So today we're gonna go over 10 interesting facts about Coleman Trebor. Starting in at number one, Trebor's homeworld. The dinosaur-looking Jedi Master Coleman Trebor, who had a bony crest atop his head, was a member of an alien species called the Verk, who were native to the Outer Rim territory world of Sembla. Though some thought of the Verk as a primitive race, they were actually extremely skilled mediators and highly empathetic. Master Trebor was gray-skinned, but his people could also be green and dark green. Their very distinct head crests continued to grow throughout their lives, so my man could end up looking like Kiari Mundi, maybe, you know, as later years. I'm just kidding. Number two, he took Uriel Poof's seat on the High Council. After the death of Jedi Master Uriel Poof, he was the guy that looked like a Q-tip. Trevor was invited by the Jedi to take his place on the Council. Not only was that an incredible honor for the Verk Jedi Master, but he was also the only known member of his kind to ever be a Jedi, let alone a High Council Master. Number three, his best friend was a Padawan. Though the Padawan of Jedi Master Lura Tranor became very close friends with the Jedi High Counselor Coleman Trevor, the two had many insightful conversations and bonded despite their huge differences in rank. Jill was not present at the Battle of Genosis, but she lost both both her master and her dear friend in the dust fields of the Petronaki arena. Number four, he was a PR man for the Jedi Order. Coleman Trevor, who was well connected with various diverse contacts throughout the galaxy, was a very accomplished diplomat and somewhat of a celebrity, as he earned a bit of a galactic fame after averting a number of interplanetary conflicts without bloodshed. The Verk would attend numerous social functions and appear on official media outlets as a sort of PR man for the Jedi. Number five, his appearance is based based on a dinosaur. The Jedi Master's features including his head crest were based off the fossilized remains of the Hardosaurid Parasaurolophus, a herbivore that walked both as a biped and quadruped some 76 to 73 million years ago. The model for Coleman Trebor is also used as the Jedi Instructor miniature from the Star Wars miniature set Master of the Force. For some reason he was made part of the Old Republic faction as opposed to the faction belonging to the Republic where he should belong. Number six the origin of his name. If you think Coleman Trevor sounds more human than alien or dinosaur-like, there's a reason for that. ILM created the character entirely in CGI and originally were going to name him Sar Labuda. But during the production of Attack of the Clones, so many new Jedi whose names were never spoken in the films were introduced. So their official credited or expanded universe names were frequently shuffled around and another Jedi became Sar Labuda. This gave an opportunity for an ILM employee who worked as an effects supervisor on the prequels named Rob Coleman to have the Verk Jedi named after him, with Trevor being the reverse of Robert. Rob Coleman would also later go on to direct several episodes of the Clone Wars series. Number seven, Trevor helped prevent the Supreme Chancellor's assassination. Big oof on this one. Along with the Jedi Master Shock T, Coleman Trevor was among the first to learn about an attack on the Senate building by a terrorist named Granta Omega, who had stormed the building with a group of assassin droids in an attempt to eliminate Supreme Chancellor Palpatine. He, Shakti, and a few other Jedi rushed the Grand Convocation Chamber, also known as the Senate Rotunda, which was unoccupied, except for Palpatine and Granta Omega's forces. While they were engaging the assassin droids, Trevor and the other Jedi also used the pods that the Senators would normally use in the Grand Chamber as a means to propel themselves forwards towards Palpatine and Omega. The Jedi succeeded in destroying the droids and foiling Omega's plot as the Chancellor was freed unscathed. Number eight, the diplomat warrior. Coleman Trevor was known for his ability to peacefully settle interplanetary disputes with his exceptional diplomatic skills, as well as his very humble nature then as a warrior. It was because of these traits, as well as his galaxy-spanning connections, that he was made a member of the Jedi High Council. Not because of his prowess in the Force or his lightsaber skills, though he was very adept at Sorsu, which was Form 3, and what Obi-Wan Kenobi was very, very good at. In fact, Mace Windu called Obi-Wan the master of Sorsu. Coleman 
Gentleman also had basic knowledge in Form 4, Ataru, and Form 6, Niman. He was also an accomplished martial artist and a renowned telepath. He wasn't weak in the use of the Force either. He was actually pretty strong, as in addition to his telepathy, he was able to use standard abilities such as Force Push, Force Pull, Force Levitation, Telekinesis, and Jedi Mind Trick. Number 9. He was killed by Jango Fett. Unfortunately for the Verk Jedi, he crossed paths with Jango Fett in the Petronaki Arena on Genosis, before the notorious bounty hunter lost his head to Mace Windu. Trevor was part of the Jedi assault team that had been sent to save Obi-Wan Kenobi from Count Dooku and the Confederacy of Independent Systems, the CIS. But when he attempted to confront Dooku on the arena balcony, the Verk was quickly engaged by Jango Fett, who shot at him with his blaster. Trevor managed to deflect two of the bolts before an additional two hit him in the shoulder and directly in his abdomen, causing him to plummet off the balcony, dead before he hit the floor. So even with all that sword Sorsu training, the master of defense, as they called that style, and as they called Obi-Wan, he still wasn't good enough to deflect the blaster bolts from Jango. And finally, number 10, the Clone Wars may have been his fault. After the Battle of Genosis, the Jedi High Council gave Coleman Trevor's seat, which had previously been rearrayed poofs, to a more powerful Jedi Master named Kid Fisto. As the conflict spanned into a galaxy-wide war, it was believed that had Coleman Trevor been successful in striking down Dooku, the Clone Wars and its future consequences could have been entirely averted. Hope you guys enjoyed some 10 facts about our boy Coleman Trevor. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if there are any that I missed out that you want me to include in maybe a part two. And let me know which one of these top 10 were your favorites. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next one. Until then, remember the force will be with you always. Hey everyone, today we're going to cover 10 facts about a Jedi Master that you might not know too much about. Now I did a video covering his untimely death, so if you want you can check that out and I'll link it in the description. But today's video is going to be a top 10 about this Q-tip looking awesome funky Jedi. Here we go. Number 1. He was brainy. The lean, long-necked Jedi Master, Yerael Poof, was a Kermian native to the outer world of, well, Kermia. Like all members of his species, he had four arms, his upper arms, and an additional set that hit under his cloak. Because of his extra limbs, Yerael was very dexterous, and his olfactory glands that gave him a sense of smell were located in his hands. In addition to all that, the Kermian also had two brains, one that was located inside of his head, as expected, and another within his chest. With his long neck, long body, and legs, he easily stood at least three feet taller than most other humanoid races. Number two, Yerael preferred not to use a lightsaber. A diplomat and teacher, the Kermian Jedi Master was a highly admired member of the Jedi High Council, and a bit of a rascal in his use of the Force. Irail was extremely adept at mind tricks and force illusions, to the point that he preferred to use that ability over the use of his lightsaber. Though, like all Jedi, he knew how to use the elegant weapon if he had to. In fact, his dexterity made him a frighteningly dangerous lightsaber combatant, as he was able to perfect many moves that only someone with his spineless anatomy was able to do. Number 3. He practiced the art of battle meditation. Now that you've watched the video from a few days ago, you'll understand this much better. Battle meditation is a force power that augments a force practitioner's allies' morale, while simultaneously corroding away at their enemies' will to fight. This was one of Yerael's unique talents. He preferred it as an alternative to resorting to violence. Though the Kermian had his own take on the ability, one thing that he changed about it was that he would boost his friend's spirits, while for his adversaries, he would generate illusions of terrible beasts or cohorts of soldiers to instill fear and terror in their hearts, which I guess is a better option than a lightsaber through the chest. Number four, his connection to the video game Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Jedi Master Cordova and his apprentice Sir Junda came before the High Council while Yerael was present. The two Jedi had just returned from a mission to the forested planet Namil, where they had to restore peace between a tribe of Trandoshans and Dupai monks. Junda had mistakenly believed that it had been the Trandoshans who were the aggressors, but her master had discovered that they had just retaliated because the Dupai monks had stolen credits from their tribe. The Council was briefing the duo on their next mission, to help explore a temple that the Da Corporation had recently uncovered on the planet. Thank you.